Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Peter Zöre. I uh, represent Forum for Religious Freedom Europe, yeah, 4F Europe, and I represent also nine human rights organizations from Europe who are collecting data about uh, the Church of Almighty God and the persecution in China and their situation here in uh, the Republic of Korea. So uh, I'm very glad that today Linda could take time yes. to share her story with us. So Linda, yes. uh, let me ask you yes. about uh, your uh, age, uh, your status uh, and, and uh, when you joined uh, the Church of Almighty God and uh, when you came to Korea and please share. Yes. I'm 37 years old and I joined the church in 2004. I came to South Korea in 2014. Okay. And uh, my important question to you is why did you come to Korea? Why did you uh, leave China? What motivated you to leave China and come to Korea? One of the most important reasons is that in China, there is no freedom of religion, and belief in God is persecuted. If I continue to believe in God in China, I would be incarcerated or even tortured to death. So I had to leave China. South Korea is a democratic country and is very close to China. It was my first choice to escape China for survival. That is why I fled to South Korea. I understand. And uh, when you joined uh, the church in 2004, uh, when did you realize that uh, there is no religious freedom in China? And how, how did you realize this? How did you experience this? I myself used to be a lawyer and sometimes I represented religious cases. At that time, I could only represent those cases according to the orders of the government. I could not truly protect my clients, and I could not respect their freedom. It was through my work that I gradually realized in China there is no freedom of religion, and their religious beliefs are subjected to repression and persecution. When I was representing their cases, I knew that my clients only practiced their religion and didn't do any bad things. But I had to say what the government told me to say and label the charge of disturbing social order on them. I had to plead them guilty and ask them to cop a plea. If they refused to forsake their faith, they would most certainly be sentenced to prison. After I joined the church in 2004, I started to have meetings with my brothers and sisters, where we fellowshiped about our understanding of God's words and how to cast off our corrupt disposition. But I often heard news of the arrests of my brothers and sisters. My family used to host brothers and sisters, and so my family was monitored by the government, and we had to move house three times. As I came to know more about house churches in China, I learned that it is not just the Church of Almighty God that is targeted. Other house churches are also persecuted. And now the persecution has aggravated. Even the three self-churches authorized by the government cannot put up crosses. Pastors there must preach according to the government's order. If they fail to do so, they will also be persecuted. So it's not the case that the three self-churches are free from persecution, as most people tend to believe. They are also persecuted. How many Christians in China belong to the non-official uh, category? Uh, how, how many of them are persecuted? Mm. I don't know the exact number, because there are too many. Okay. And uh, <coughs> you said that 
you had to move house uh, three times, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. This was one of the reasons uh, because of uh, persecution. Yes. Uh, and it was because of the neighbors. Uh, the neighbors have been instructed to spy on you or uh, monitor you. That was the reason. This is only one of the reasons. Some brothers and sisters who had meetings in our house were arrested. If the police obtained the video footage of the surveillance cameras, they could find us as well. And that would lead to the arrest of me and my family members. So we had to move. And uh, what about your own uh, family members, uh, your, your parents, uh, your husband? Uh, uh, what about them? How did they react? Both my parents also believe in Almighty God. My father was a civil servant and a Communist Party member. There's no freedom of religion in China, so it was impossible for my father to believe in God freely. He had to attend the meetings, read God's words and pray secretly. Otherwise, he would lose his job and be arrested. So on the one hand, my father wanted to continue his belief in God. On the other hand, he also cared about his personal safety. What's more, my mother had been arrested and later released. In order to avoid being arrested again, she was hiding away from home. Due to the huge psychological pressure and the pain of not being able to reunite with his wife, my father committed suicide. My mom was arrested while preaching the gospel in December 2012. She told me that after she was arrested, she was forced to sign statements renouncing her faith in God. But she didn't sign them because she didn't want to betray God. The CCP could not accuse her of anything. They released her because they wanted to identify more brothers and sisters through her contacts with them even better, contacts with the leaders so that they can arrest more people. So after 15 days of incarceration, she was released, but was not able to come back home. In order to avoid being monitored, she has to hide in other places. I have not seen her for five years. You have heard nothing since five years. Yes. And uh, have you been arrested sometime? I have not been arrested before, but after my mom was released, the police visited our house trying to find my mom. They even asked my neighbors about my family. Later, both my father and I heard unusual noises while making phone calls. We suspected that our phone calls were monitored, so we had to stop our church life. We did not dare to contact our brothers and sisters. My mother left home for fear of being arrested again. Two months later, my father committed suicide. The leaders at my workplace warned me not to believe in God anymore, or else the consequences would be severe. Later, I also left my home and hid in my brother's and sister's house for 10 months. At last, in order to avoid being arrested, I fled abroad. So, Linda, uh, if you now have the chance to tell the world uh, what has moved you most, what has uh, uh, touched you most, uh, what has motivated you to come to South Korea, mm -hmm. uh, what would you say? What would you tell us? Now you have the chance to, to speak out. Please share with us. What I want to say is that even though we have experienced such persecution, we have no regrets. Because human beings and all things were created by God. It is right and proper for us created beings to worship the Creator. I believe that only by believing in God can we live a true life. For me and my brothers and sisters, our simple wish is that we can have a free environment where we can worship God. 
And we also want to tell the world about the CCP's suppression of religious freedom, so that our brothers and sisters who are still in mainland China can suffer less. This is our biggest wish. And uh, what what would you want to say to the Korean people? I want to say to the South Korean people that ever since the South Korean government issued the Refugee Act in 2013, there are many Chinese Christians who came to South Korea, and they have always abided by the law and have done no harm to the country. We are willing to get along with the South Korean people and establish a friendship with them. And, uh, what would you like to say to the to the European people? Because uh, we are representing Europe here, we are representing nine human rights organizations. What would you like to say to us? I want to say that because the Chinese government used diplomacy and money to exert pressure on the South Korean government, the South Korean government cannot properly protect the Christians from mainland China. We hope to receive support from the European states, especially the European NGOs. We hope that more human rights organizations in Europe could tell the world about the story of the persecution we suffer, so that the Chinese Christians in South Korea can receive help and protection. We, sh we will share this, we will pass this on to them. And, and now, uh, if uh, CCP is listening to your testimony, what would you like to say to CCP? Innumerable Christians have been subjected to the CCP's persecution. I have so many mixed feelings. It was hard for me to express what I want to say to the CCP. In the international community, there are many people with a sense of justice. They are appealing to the Chinese government to stop persecuting religious beliefs and to allow people to enjoy their rights and freedom. But that doesn't work. The CCP does not listen. And so I do not know what to say to the CCP. This is your feeling. Mm -hmm. And uh, is there anything else you would like to say to the um, to the Christians here in Korea? Uh, because there are uh, there are many Christian churches here. Uh, you could say they are brothers and sisters in Christ, huh? but uh, uh, they don't seem to want to help you. Uh, why? What? Uh, what is the reason? Is there anything you would like to express to them? I completely understand why they wouldn't help us. It is because they don't know about China, and they don't know about the living conditions of Christians in China. All they hear are rumors spread by the CCP, because the CCP denies that it persecutes religions, and instead puts all kinds of charges on those innocent Christians. Because of these rumors, they have all kinds of one-sided views and prejudices against us. This is completely understandable. I do not bear grudges against them. But I do hope that they can try to learn the truth and make a judgment after learning the truth. Maybe that will be more objective. Uh, then uh, I have one more question. Um, is it okay? Yeah. Mm, yes. Uh, <laughs> um, what is your hope? Uh, I understand that uh, you know you came to South Korea and even left your family uh, because you you are seeking religious freedom. Mm? I understand. Uh, but say, if uh, if now uh, the Chinese government would decide to grant religious freedom and stop persecuting believers, you know, say there would be such a miracle, huh? would you uh, go back to China? Sure. Sure. I would love to return to my hometown. 
my final question. Well, <laughs> Uh, what is your hope for the future? My future hope is that I can follow the teachings of God, become a true person, a real human being, and then divest myself of all the corrupt disposition. Thank you very much. Uh, this is a very good message to close the interview. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Good. Thank you.